from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Roshan Lloyd de Souza. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from two donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Thunder Bay, Ontario, for the living and deceased members of the Kelso, Martin, Permanti, and Topeto families. Also, in loving memory of William Kelso, who passed away in March of this year. The second is Corey Prank from Mount Forest, Ontario, for the repose of the soul of her husband, Martin, and for the living and deceased members of her family. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we come together to celebrate this Eucharist, let us thank and praise God for the gift of this day and for the gift of life to each one of us, and ask the Lord to fill us with grace and strength to listen to his words and receive him in the sacrament. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for all of us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Tobit. Tobit, who was blind and ridiculed by his neighbors, even by his wife, wept with much grief and anguish of the heart and began to pray, saying, you are righteous, O Lord, and all your deeds are just. All your ways are mercy and truth. You judge the world. And now, O Lord, remember me and look favorably upon me. Do not punish me for my sins and for my unwitting offenses and those that my ancestors committed before you. They sinned against you and disobeyed your commandments so you gave us over to plunder, exile, and death, to become the talk, the byword, and an object of reproach among all the nations among whom you have dispersed us. And now your many judgments are true in exacting penalty from me for my sins. For we have not kept your commandments and have not walked in accordance with truth before you. So now, deal with me as you will. Command my spirit to be taken from me, so that I may be released from the face of the earth and become dust, for it is better for me to die than to live. On the same day, at Ekbatana in Media, it also happened that Sarah, the daughter of Ragel, was repro reproached by one of her father's maids, for she had been married to seven husbands, and the wicked demon Asmodeus had killed each of them before they had been with her, as is customary for wives. So the maid said to her, You are the one who kills your husbands. See, you have already been married to seven husbands and have not borne the name of a single one of them. Why do you beat us? Because your husbands are dead? Go with them. May we never see a son or daughter of yours. On that day she was grieved in spirit and wept. When she had gone up to her father's upper room, 
With hands outstretched toward the window, she prayed and said, Blessed are you, merciful God. Blessed is your name forever. Let all your works praise you forever. And now, Lord, I turn my face to you and raise my eyes toward you. Command that I may be released from the earth and not listen to such reproaches any more. I am my father's only child. He has no other child to be his heir, and he has no close relative or other kindred for whom I should keep myself as wife. Already seven husbands of mine have died. Why should I still live? But if it is not pleasing to you, O Lord, to take my life, hear me in my disgrace. At that very moment, the prayers of both of them were heard in the glorious presence of God. So the angel Raphael was sent to heal both of them. Tobit, by removing the white films from his eyes so that he might see God's light with his eyes. And Sarah, daughter of Ragel, by giving her in marriage to Tobias, the son of Tobit, and by setting her free from the wicked demon. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 The Lord be with you. And with and your, your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, 
the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. There were seven brothers. The first married, and when he died, left no children. And the second married her and died, leaving no children. And the third likewise. None of the seven left children. Last of all, the woman herself died. In the resurrection, whose wife will she be? For the seven had married her. Jesus said to them, Is not this the reason you were wrong? That you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God? For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And so, as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the story about the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is God, not of the dead, but of the living. You are quite wrong. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. My brothers and sisters, in our gospel reading, a religious group called the Sadducees come to Jesus with a question about life after death. This is a question that many people think about. I just read a study that was done back in 2018, where 66% of Canadians believed in life after death. There is a kind of curiosity about what happens after we die. And I believe that curiosity has been heightened as a result of the things that have been happening around, especially coronavirus. The Sadducees come to Jesus with a question about life after death, and Jesus is going to dismantle their argument and their theology like he has done with other groups. But he's also going to give us a healthy perspective of what we can expect for the future. For the follower of Jesus, we can have hope for the future and live with the end in mind even though some of our questions about life after death remain unanswered. Mark begins in verse 18 by telling his readers that Sadducees had come to Jesus. Who were the Sadducees? The Sadducees, along with the Pharisees, dominated religious life among the Jews. They believed similar things, but they were also significantly different. The Pharisees believed in angels and demons, whereas the Sadducees did not. The Pharisees accepted a broader understanding of scripture, which included both written and oral tradition, whereas the Sadducees only accepted the authority of the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament. The Pharisees affirmed the resurrection of the dead, which the Sadducees denied. In Jesus' day, the majority of Jews believed in life after death, but the Sadducees did not. They didn't believe in heaven or hell or anything like that. They simply believed when you died, you simply ceased to exist. These were the Sadducees, Mark says, that they are the ones who say that there is no resurrection. And this is important for us to note because they are about to ask Jesus a question about the resurrection. They are about to ask Jesus a question about something that they don't even agree with in order that they might trap Jesus and shut him up. And the basis for their question is rooted in what is called liverite marriage. Liverite 
marriage is explained in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25, verses 5 to 10. Please read today to get more about this Leverite marriage and the background for which the Sadducees ask the question. The Sadducees don't believe in the resurrection. Remember, they don't believe in the life to come. They create this scenario where Jesus is being forced to argue for who has the right for this woman in heaven. And thereafter, the argument continues. But the focus that Jesus gives us today is to focus on scripture and God of the living and not of the dead. The things that we do here on earth that brings us heaven on earth and not something that brings us into bad perspective and life. So therefore, as we celebrate this Eucharist today, let us focus on Jesus, the God of the living who is present among us. Let us follow him carefully. Let us follow him faithfully. Let us bring forward our prayers before our loving God. Let us pray for the church, for the leaders, for Francis, our Bishop Francis, and all the clergy and religious, that we may spread the message of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our daily TV Mass Prayer Intentions book, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our annual celebration of the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus renew and deepen our faith in his love for us. May he guide us as we seek to walk the path of mercy, compassion, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we sow through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis our Pope, Francis our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called as to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ bring us up, Master. Amen. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the love of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. We gather.